This is gonna be spicier than the last one. I, I might throw up. Hey, what's going on, everybody? For First We Feast, I'm Sean Evans, and you're watching Hot Ones. It's the show with hot questions and even hotter wings. And today we're joined by Gwyneth Paltrow. She's an Oscar, Golden Globe, and Emmy Award-winning actor, best-selling cookbook author, and the founder and CEO of the lifestyle brand Goop, which offers everything from beauty and wellness products, a fashion line, media ventures, retail stores, and even the takeout salads that Susan loves so much. Gwyneth Paltrow, <laughs> welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. How are you around hot sauce, and are you having any last-second reservations before we kick things off here? I am full of regret. <laughs> I can't believe I'm here. I'm here because my son loves hot sauce and loves this show, apparently. I am not, I do like hot sauce. I like spicy, but I don't think I'm equipped to be here. Okay. That's very nice. That's spicy. I thought you were going to start real plain and like sort of groom me into the experience. <laughs> Out of the frying pan and into the fire okay. on the show. But you got it. Okay. Is there a tension between growth and preciousness of vision when you're building a company like Goop, especially like in today's entrepreneurial environment where everything is about scaling all the time? That's a really good question. There is a pressure. There's a there's like a natural sort of tensegrity, um, which I think can be difficult when you start a business just all from like heart and wanting to curate beautiful things and share the best of everything with people. And sometimes the more commercial choice is not the right choice. I never want to let our reader or our customer down in any way. I never want to offer something or recommend something that I don't 100% believe in, use, love, I'm obsessed with. So I, it has, I think, made growth slower. Very smoky smelling. Mm. Sort of like have this a jerky esque thing happening. Yeah, right, mm -hmm. right. And maybe even a little bit less hot than the last one. You right. Know? I, I think agree. we kind of jar you here in the beginning. Okay. And you panic a little bit. Yeah. But then settling into the game here. Yeah. You I have mean, your I sea still legs. have a. I still have a warm, tingly sensation. That'll, that's the show. It'll okay. persist. All right. <laughs> I'm just trying to set expectations for <laughs> okay. you. Okay. Know? Why are you so passionate about hot sauce? You know what? I, I wasn't naturally. Okay. Like the hot sauce just came because we wanted to disrupt the PR driven flight pattern of our guests, right? Yes. So hot sauce does that, or at least we thought it might. And then we've been doing this for 23 <laughs> seasons, so we might be right on some level. You might be on something. You know what something. I'm saying? So hot sauce was never, like, it's not like I loved hot sauce and built a whole show around it. Right. I kind of had to like become a lover of hot sauce to keep it going. You know what I'm saying? Okay. Now do you put hot sauce on everything? I kind of do. Or are like, you sick of it? Wings I never want to see again in my life. <laughs> like when I'm done with this, I've eaten over 3,000 chicken wings for the internet's amusement over the years. Like I'm over those. Yeah. Like you'll never see me eat another wing when this is done. Right. But I think my appreciation for hot sauce has only grown because I've seen the way that it transforms food and talking to all these different growers and all these different craft makers. Yeah. So I think it's actually strengthened the appreciation I have for hot sauce. Wings dead to me. <laughs> All right, are you ready to move on here to sauce number three? I guess so. <laughs> Funky's hot sauce. Funky's hot sauce. Stellar fuzz. Yeah, it's getting fun. Is it? <laughs> That's pretty good. So in 2017, a study was commissioned ranking American actors' British accents in leading roles for films that grossed over $100 million. Really? Yes. Okay. And your performance in Shakespeare in Love actually finished second behind only Meryl Streep's Margaret Thatcher. 
Oh. During I'll your, go toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with yeah, Street. Yeah, you got to take that. I'll take it. During your acting heyday, how would you describe your approach to mastering a character's dialect? Okay, this bug is not part of my tasting menu. Right. Um, so it was interesting because I didn't know, I had kind of, I have like a relatively good ear for that kind of thing. So I had grown up, you know, making prank calls, doing accents, that kind of thing, and like making my friends laugh. But it turns out that to actually do it properly, you have to relearn how to speak. So the English accent is so different and the muscles are so different, like where you place the tongue on the teeth and the mouth is so different. Like certain muscles are more relaxed and certain are more tense. So when you're in the country, you get that. I think you got it. Die, bitch! <laughs> um, so I think you really get the opportunity to use the language and really hear because it's so different when you're in like an academic setting trying to learn, but you know, as opposed to being in conversation. Oh, green chili. Mm hmm. Right, I can see the face, you know, a little bit of a cumulative effect that we have going on. Yeah, here, you know is what I'm that, saying? Is that what happens? So they all kind of uh, will affect you physically in different ways. Okay. So you do have uh, a walls closing in situation going I do. on. Right. And I feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I get it. I get it. <clears throat> so there are certain goop products that have a larger than life mythology in pop culture. Okay. What do you see as the role of provocations in building a brand or movement? Um, another great question. Um so it's funny, we never really set out to be provocative. We just wanted to talk about things that people weren't talking about and things that we think should be, um, should not like be shrouded in shame. And I think you can only change culture by being provocative, whether you mean to or not. We always say, you know, we, we believe that we're a provocateur in the cause for good. Um, so it's not for its own sake, but really to bring like more agency and, you know, individuality forward. Oh, queso, sin queso. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And this is kind of a step mm -hmm. up. But I can see in your eyes, determination. I feel determined. I also feel like I might pass out. Right. <laughs> like I feel it's a thin like, line. Yeah. Like my breathing is sort of an issue, but I'm sure it'll pass. <laughs> Fact or fiction, Kiefer Sutherland babysat you as a kid. Fact. Isn't that cool? I was at Williamstown, the Williamstown Theater Festival where my mom was doing plays and he was an apprentice and he babysat me and my brother. That's amazing. And he was awesome. <laughs> How about this one? This is kind of a winding one. I'm curious about this, all right? So, though not shown in the movie, that there was a Gwyneth Paltrow prop head that was made for that closing scene in Seven, the box scene in Seven. Obviously, not used then, but is it true that it then sat in storage for 16 years <laughs> to be unearthed and then used in the autopsy scene in Contagion? Oh, wow. Well, there was definitely a head made for seven, because I remember, you know, they ensconce you in silicone yeah. or whatever. And I do think there's a single frame of it used, but it's like imperceptible to the eye. That's what I've been told. Um, so you can freeze frame it. So and see I if guess. I can find it, yeah. I think that's what I've heard. And I'm not sure about the Contagion one, if they use that or the not. The same head. The same head. The jury's still out. I mean, that would be smart for saving on budget, I guess. <laughs> Is it true that uh, Bill Clinton passed out of sleep during a White House screening <laughs> of Emma? True. He was snoring right in front of me. <laughs> I was like, wow, I guess this is going to be a real hit movie. But it was, so fuck you, Bill Clinton. <laughs> I like the bourbon part. Right, and then it kind of falls off a cliff. Falls with the way off. Yeah. Mm. 
So during his acceptance speech at last night's Academy Awards, <laughs> American fiction director Cord Jefferson made a plea to Hollywood where he said, instead of making one $200 million movie, try making 20 $10 million movies. As someone whose bread and butter was that mid-level budget film, yeah. do you at all resonate with his frustrations and the way that the business of Hollywood has changed over the course of your career? I absolutely understand where he's coming from. It makes sense, right? You want to have the best chance of having a strong ROI. People put a lot of money into these things and they want to they want them to be profitable. But I think if I look at the industry as a whole, this sort of big push into superhero movies, I mean, you can only make so many good ones that feel truly original and and yet they're still, you know, always trying to reach as many people as possible, which sometimes hinders quality or specificity or real point of view. So I, I mean, you're absolutely right. I grew up doing those movies and I sometimes lament the fact, like I look back at some of the movies that I made in the 90s and think that just wouldn't get made yeah. now. I do think that you get more diversity of art when there's less at stake and people can sort of express their true voice and make a film the way they want to make it. And then I think those are generally the more resonant ones. If I pass out, will you CPR me? Or yeah, I'm on it. You're in good hands. You're in good hands over here. I got you. Okay. La what? La, la pimentière. Mm-hmm, forbidden fruit. Wow, okay. I know. I took too big of a bite. I know, I saw that. Fucking A. <laughs> that is such a JV move. <laughs> no, it's Why not. Why did I do that? Because, you know, you're immersing yourself in the experience. You're not cheating the experience over here. Right. What's a Buster Paltrow cocktail? And can you talk us through how to make one <laughs> in as much detail as possible? Absolutely. <laughs> I'll take notes. Okay, a Buster Paltrow is a whiskey-based cocktail inspired by my grandfather, Buster Paltrow, who was a real, like he loved like a whiskey sour and a bourbon sour that he ordered with no fruit, very important. So basically what I do, it's two ounces of your favorite rye or whiskey or whatever you like, an ounce of maple syrup and an ounce of lemon juice. And you can shake it or stir it. And that's my go-to cocktail. And what a lovely pairing that would be right now, especially going into this next sauce. I thought we were going to be friends, and now... <laughs> right, there's a lot of give and take. I get it. I just I don't it. know what's happening to our trust right now. I'm so scared. I'm literally shaking. My, my wing is shaking. <laughs> Wow. And then this will be a, kind of a unique experience. This is incredibly painful. <clears throat> but I will say, despite the discomfort, this is one of the calmest reactions I've ever seen to it in my life. Wow. No, I get it. I get it. Right here with you. The, the violation is intense. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a good tagline, actually. <laughs> and on that topic, as someone who's been a prolific actor for over 30 years, you know, you have dozens upon dozens upon dozens of movie credits. You know, some of them Oscar winners, other of them box office smashes. Some of them you might even have forgotten that you made. So. To put that to the test, I want to play a little game where I'll hit you with a Gwyneth Paltrow movie tagline. And I want you, through the spice fog, to try to connect it to the Gwyneth Paltrow movie. Does that sound good? I have no idea what you just said. I don't speak English. <laughs> no, right, no. I, I don't know what's happening. I'm talking to you underwater a little bit yeah. right now. I totally get how that goes. But how about this? Uh, when good luck is a long shot, you have to hedge your bets. Hard eight? It is hard eight. There you go, one for one. How okay. about this one? Life was too small to contain her. Shallow how? 
No, that was a good guess. <laughs> Wait, that was a fucked up guess. <laughs> yeah, I know. Sorry. But it was funny. Sylvia, oh. one for two. How about this one? It's better to be a fake somebody than a real nobody. Talented Mr. Ripley. Bang, bang. Had that one, no problem. Um, nothing spreads like fear. Contagion. There you go. You're on a roll. It doesn't matter where you've been as long as you come back strong. Country strong. Oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know if I'll be able to stop you. There are two sides to every story. Sliding door. This is incredible. You are on a roll. Um, I got one more for you. Okay. Rock and romance explode in a Texas town. Oh, I just not flash. Wait, shout. Yes, oh! shout. I got it. What do you remember about shout? Do you remember like, anything about anything. shout? I think 1991. I was a kid. And I have to say, I'm so impressed with what you just did right there. You know, your uh, your credits they just endlessly scroll. You know what I mean? But you were able to Thank just kind you. of pick those taglines. I think Even the, through the, the the fog of war of hot ones over here. I think the chili sort of consolidated all my blood and brain cells like here. So yeah. my cognition went up. <laughs> I, I might throw up. Right? Now remember the last one. Immediately jarring. Immediately breaking containment. Yeah. This one? This is bad. Not fun either, but mm -hmm. not like the last one. Not like the last one. <sighs> Finding that calm place. Wow. So last fall you did an interview with Vogue set in the stunning garden of your Amagansett home. Do you have a favorite herb at the moment? <laughs> <laughs> I did not think you were gonna ask that. That was so funny. Um, I love all herbs except for dill, which should be illegal. Oh, why should dill be illegal? Because it's so gross. <laughs> it ruins everything and anything it touches. Uh, uh, with it's, it's a dominant kind of flavor. Dominant and like, just bad. I don't understand why people like it. I, I'm. I love cilantro, and I know some people have that reaction to cilantro, but I love herbs. I love, I know it's boring, but basil is my favorite. That's not boring. It's just That's so- not boring at all. Don't apologize for that. Fragrant and almost like, it's so optimistic, isn't it? <laughs> it I'm with you. It smells like summer and tomatoes, and I don't know, I love it. All right, Gwyneth Paltrow. Oh my God. All right, I'll do it. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put it on the cutting board and then I'm gonna dip. Respect, that's the smart way to do it. I just want you to know that I'm not fully okay from the last two things ago. Well, you know, it's it's nine wings that you've knocked down. Okay. You know, Gwyneth, you've just sat here and casually eaten some of the hottest chicken wings on planet Earth. And to close things out, we're going to actually do something that we've never done before, and I'm so excited. It is going to be a post Hot One Show skincare routine <laughs> that you're gonna talk me through step by step. I understand that you brought some product from the new Target line. We did. Good, clean, goop. I am a blank canvas for you. This is kind of my first time. Okay. I'm very excited, and I know I'm in good hands, but first things first, someone bring me my vanity. Whoa. Wow. And we're here. How did that happen? Through the through the magic and power of Colin, the editor, I think. <laughs> and uh, look at we have a vanity set up. I have like uh, my mise en place over here. You do. So you probably want to start with the green juice cleanser. Okay. Just a tiny bit. Okay. Wow, you really don't wash your face, do you? <laughs> no. Okay, that's like. Let me Is see. Is this too much? Way too much. Way too well, much. You need like a dime size. A dime size? Well, tell me dime size. <laughs> Sorry. Put a little, there you go. All right. Okay. Now, if you were home, you could really go crazy with it. But, you know, for now, this is good. No, I'm kind of home. Okay. You know, this is kind of my home. What do you think? 
It smells awesome. Yep. It feels nice. You don't wash your face after makeup and everything? I've, I'm gonna leave you with a big thing of cleanser. No, I appreciate that. You're gonna oh. change my life going okay, forward good. in life, right? <laughs> wow, I'm gonna you be a are completely different man on the other side of this. more handsome than when I oh. got here. <laughs> All right, well, you're not a sell. <laughs> <laughs> now, I think, Ooh. see? Yeah, see yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah, saying? No, you weren't lying. Hot Ones <laughs> takes on a whole new meaning. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now we're gonna take the, I think you've got the exfoliator there. I do, it's a scrub. It's a scrub. So this is great for after makeup or if you're if you're feeling like your skin's a little dull or tired. <coughs> Pardon me, I'm still no, choking I know. to death Don't because apologize. of you. <laughs> <coughs> okay, great, now we wanna wash that off your face. All right, get some, get some water. Here, and, just yeah. dunk it in here. All right, thank you. Get some more. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Perfect. Oh, heteros are so funny. Oh my gosh. So you can take the healthy aging serum. <laughs> A little bit, you know, like just dip your sort of these couple fingers in. Just. Yeah, there you go. And the other side too? Or yeah, just, you yeah, can yeah, do yeah. that and Get rub them there. together. There you go. <laughs> okay, and then apply. There you go. And definitely get like under your eyes. Uh, it's important, you know? Mm -hmm. This is this is a great serum. It's one of our best sellers. Really, okay, perfect. There you go. You can stop. Perfect. What if I want just one more? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Perfect. Look at you. Wow. I'm actually, And there it is. I'm a not new kidding. man. You look amazing. Do you even recognize me? No, I don't. <laughs> Well, Gwyneth, thank you so much. The new face feels great. It smells amazing. And then to the touch, I appreciate it. It almost makes me feel bad for all that I put you through, but you know what? You stood in the face of that challenge and you won. You, you conquered, and now there's nothing left to do but roll out the red carpet for you, Gwyneth Paltrow. This camera, this camera, this camera, let the people know what you have going on in your life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I'm drunk on hot sauce. Um, let's see, what do I have going on in my life? Well. We have our great new line, which you tried, Good Clean Goop. That's available at Target and Amazon. And we have all of our regular stuff that we do all the time at goop.com, which is pretty awesome. So that's keeping me busy. <laughs> oh my God. Wow. When my son was little, because he loves, loves spicy hot sauce, we used to do with my godson this game called Mexican Dare, where we'd get all these Mexican chilies lined up, and he would like... <laughs> Russian roulette with them. It was so funny, <laughs> and they would, by the end, they'd be like, you know, snot pouring down their face, crying, like, ah, right, you know. Well wow. Hey, what's going on, Hot Ones fans? This is Sean Evans. Thank you so much for watching today's episode. And if you would like to get the taste of Hot Ones delivered right to your door, well, I have good news for you. The season 23 Hot Ones 10 pack is available now. Heatness.com, Heatness.com. That's Heatness.com to get your hands on the season 23 Hot Ones lineup. Milk not included, ice cream, highly recommended. And remember, be careful around the eyes.